I'm Andrew Burton. I'm from Newcastle, but the other one. Um, the, my proposal for Stoke are the two large but tiny brick sculptures um, up in the entrance to the, mu the museum. Uh, and I'm going to explain the background to those and how I got to those. And a lot of my inspiration comes from India, where I've worked quite a lot. And one of the things that's important to me about India is the way that one's expectations are, completely sub uh, are consistently subverted, the way that one's always surprised. For instance, a very familiar thing like a cow photographed here during a Pongal festival in Mysore, but a yellow cow. Why is it yellow? You know, it's something that's familiar but totally unfamiliar. It's actually yellow because it's fed on mangoes, which turns it yellow for the festival. I became very interested in bricks when I was working in India, too. Um, and this is in Madhya Pradesh, which is right in the middle of India. It's uh, in a little tiny village, a couple uh, who have or rent a small patch of land where the husband digs the clay. His wife pats it into these little roundels mixed with straw, pats it into a mold. It comes out of the mold. And this is their life, making these very basic but very functional bricks. They work perfectly in India because they're very good for insulation and so on. Um, here in Rajasthan, there's a rather different way of making bricks where these great domes are made with a layer of brushwood and then a layer of bricks and then another layer of brushwood and so on until you get these great sort of landscape-like objects. Keeps about 20 or 30 people going, this industry. Takes about two months to make one of these great domes and then it's set fire to and burns for several weeks. Um, this is at the beginning when the, when the, the camels are still delivering the, um, you know, the earth and all the, the, the ingredients that go to make up this great sculptural structure. I was actually working in, in Delhi, or rather just outside of Delhi, between Delhi and Gagaon, which is a sort of super modern city. But in between these two cities, there's this still relatively rural area that's actually being rapaciously built over at the moment by rich landlords who buy up tracts of land, wall it off, the villages smash down the walls. Um, and you can see here there's, a, there's a, a village, and I just draw your attention to that house on the right-hand side, which is painted blue. And blue, often in India, signifies that a Brahmin family lived there. Delhi is also a city that's made um, primarily out of bricks, other than the sort of grand architecture. A lot of the smaller architecture is just bricks. And these are manufactured in, in micro brickyards around the outskirts of the city. And you find these, these stacks of bricks, they look like sort of architectural or archaeological remains laid up in the landscape. And these became quite an inspiration to me, um, partly because they're very unlike the sort of bricks that we find here. You know, we've got sort of homogenized European bricks, but these are individual, flawed, misfired items that you look at them, each one is different, and they really display the sort of roughness of their making. Um, the great thing about bricks, and particularly in India, also is the way that they, they have to be made to fit in a human hand. And if you see a stack of bricks there, because there's not that much kind of mechanised bits to that industry, they'll always be, stacks of bricks will always be at a height that they can still be stacked by one person. And here they are in their sort of unique, flawed sense. I also got quite interested in the idea of recycling, which is, recycling has been going on forever in, in you know, developing countries. It's something that's become, become obviously very topical here. Um, but any building that gets knocked down in India, the bricks are salvaged and reused. But what I became interested in is the way that the history of those bricks is evident in every brick. For instance, you can see on the end of a lot of these that that blue colour is there, which, if you knew, would signify that, that this building was once a Brahmin house. And that idea of, of traces of history being present and continuing through the reuse interested me. I also became very interested in this, this amazing sort of stubby rough structure. Is, um, it's near the Qatab Minar, which is that building in the background. But this very brutal version of it, which actually they kept trying to build, it was supposed to be twice as high as, as the Qatab, but kept falling down. But that sort of aggressiveness interested me a great deal. Um, and bricks are everywhere. They're very, you know, they're, they're, they're the most utilitarian item. I actually spent a lot of time trying to, to, to find ways of working with other materials because I'm not, 
you know, my background isn't in ceramics, it's in sculpture, so I use lots of different materials. For instance, these fantastic oils and waxes that you find in a place called the Tilak Bazaar. In India, things are sort of displayed in different ways, so these oils are laid out on silver platters, rather like delicacies to eat. So I, um, working at a place called the Sanskriti Foundation, uh, um, I was asked to make a sculpture. Whenever you make anything in India, it always begins with a puja, a ceremony. So this is our puja. Um, and one of the things that was really interesting was actually working with expert brick masons, because Indian bricks aren't like European bricks. You don't have a saw to saw them in half. They aren't regular. They're actually very expertly worked by local masons. So um, I was able, I was working with the British Council and they were able to help me put together a team of people to, to make a sculpture. Water is also something that has a special significance in a, in a, in a city like Delhi where water is very scarce. One of the other interesting aspects of this project was how you actually communicate with people when you don't share a language. And we did that through drawings. So I would make drawings, they would draw on top of my drawings, and eventually we'd, we'd negotiate a kind of form that would come out of this. And this was a piece that came out of this in the end. It's called Sky Tub, and it's cited at the, at the Sanskriti Foundation. Going from India, I worked for a while at a place called the European Ceramic Foundation in the Netherlands, which is completely the opposite end of the scale. It's this amazing place which is set up to enable anybody to do whatever they want in ceramics. It's a sort of institution that is disappearing everywhere. The Dutch government continues to fund it, but I don't think you'd find an equivalent place in Britain, particularly somewhere that was prepared to bring in so many artists from abroad. And bricks are obviously made in Holland as well, and here they are stacked in all their sort of regularity, thoroughly organized fashion. So I became interested in working in a modular way and in, in, in crossing boundaries between landscape, architecture, between vessels, inside form and outside forms, and the way that the actual process of firing becomes very evident in the finished object. Um, often referring back to these archaeological sites that I continue to find in, um, inspiration in. I mean, my work is always often a long process as well. For instance, this piece was originally made completely out of the sort of blocks that you see on the, on the left-hand side, but in the process of firing, went through a number of firings. At one point it completely collapsed and so I had to rebuild it. And this idea of reusing bricks through a series of different incarnations became something that interested me a lot. I'm also interested in walls, in the, in the, in the sort of ordinary, the overlooked things that one encounters all over the place. And here this project was made on an, uh, a site of Hadrian's Wall which has now departed made out of tiny bricks. And um, one weekend whilst I was making it, some local graffiti artists snuck in and uh, daubed the surface of this sculpture with graffiti, which was subsequently destroyed in a great fit of destruction. But I was able to reuse these bricks for a new piece. This is a piece called Stell, which is based on a, uh, a sheepfold, kind of sheepfold that you get in Northumbria. But you can see that what were the sort of you might say aggressively graffitied bricks have acquired quite a different sense and a different meaning in this piece. And the bricks again, I reuse them lots and lots of times and each time I paint them or cement them so they gradually acquire this kind of patina which if you look at the pieces upstairs you'll be able to, to see. It's, it's a great way of working actually because you can disassemble these things and they become very compact and easily transportable. Um, this was a project in Korea where trying to get people to graffiti anything is, is you know, totally different sort of proposition. Um, but that was another piece called Enclosure, but again, made out of very old Chinese bricks. Um, this sculpture has sub subsequently been taken down and reused in somebody else's sculpture. So the whole idea of recycling takes on a slightly different meaning. And finally, these are the pieces that, well, this piece um, I made some while ago, but the, the piece that you see upstairs, the smaller piece, was made especially for this, uh, for this project. But this jug, um, I was asked to make some pieces to go in Canary Wharf, which is, you know, if you'll have been there, is a very slick, very modular sort of architecture. I was interested in the way that I was making sculptures that were modular, but the modules were much more individual. They had a very different kind of quality to those that you find 
in that type of architecture. And the kind of conjunction of these two different things interested me. And again, you can see that these bricks are, are being reused and great chunks of the old sculptures are able to be reused. And I think that's it. That's the, the piece that you see upstairs. <laughs>